Uh, Tom Salemi here from OIS TV, here with Russ Trenary, President and CEO of InFocus. Russ, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having us. Appreciate it, Tom. Very happy to have you on our Glaucoma panel today. Uh, but I just wanted to visit with you to get an updates, update on InFocus. You had some great news at the end of last year. You closed on, well, a lot of money. You read? We did, yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. We, we, we closed a C round. It was a $34 million fundraise, which was uh, quite a bit ahead of our target. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had Santon Pharmaceuticals and Hoya Corporation both participate along with uh, two VC uh, Crown Ventures and uh, Saints Capital. So it was a great raise. It uh, went very well. We had a very nice valuation that came out of it and um, really set the stage for allowing us to have all the capital that we need to get through the FDA approval process. How did you find the fundraising process? Ophthalmology itself seems to be getting some attention. Glaucoma is getting attention. MIGS obviously is getting a lot of attention, though. We've talked about whether or not InFocus falls in the MIGS camp. But how did you find the fundraising experience? Well, I think raising money is, um, um, is always difficult uh, at some level. But the data um, that we were able to show was, was so compelling. Um, and it was so differentiated from anything that anybody had seen in this space that at the end of the day, you know, a lot of money came in very quickly. We had a lot of big companies that were interested in this, and of course, two of them that placed some very large bets. And what is the primary difference? What do you think makes this, your micro shunt stand out from the crowd? Well, you know, the data would suggest that, that no matter what amount of preoperative uh, intraocular pressure a patient has, even up to 30 millimeters of mercury and beyond, we're going to get that patient to below 15 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that, that's amazing about this technology is the return to baseline vision for our patients is, is within the first week. That's something that you don't see. Mm -hmm. no, nobody gets a trabeculectomy in their first eye and says, oh, I hope to get that done in my second eye really soon. Um, but our patients are asking for it immediately. So I think with data that's that compelling, um, and the ability to, to be able to take on trabeculectomy and, and uh, tube shunts and really probably replace them as a category is, is exciting. And, and there's no other device out there that's lowering pressure as much as we are. In the three-year data you released recently, uh, what, what is next for you in terms of, go, go over that data again just a little bit, and, and what's next for you in terms of the clinical trial front? Yeah, so um, we now have, outside of the United States, over 200 patients that are entered into clinical trials, and those patients are coming in with uh, max medications, and an average of uh, about two and a half to three meds per patient, um, and they're coming in with a pre-op IOP in the mid-20s, and we're getting them to well below 15 millimeters of mercury and about 70% of those patients off their meds at years one, two, and three. Um, so we're not just dropping the med average, we're getting them off of their medications. Mm -hmm. So that's very exciting. And we're in the final phase now of our FDA clinical trial. Those data are masked, mm -hmm. but of course the protocol for that trial is the same as what we've used outside of the United States uh, for the most part. And so um, we're in the final phase. Uh, the recruiting is very robust. We're well ahead of schedule on recruiting for that, and that's usually an indication that the doctors like the procedure and they're getting a good result. If everything goes the way you'd like it to go, and that's not always the case for anyone, but how would things unfold with the FDA? When would you hope to get approval? Well, it's hard to say, you know, whether whether we'd have to even go to panel or not, but um, it'll, it'll probably take us about another 10 to 12 months to uh, to be able to recruit in the, the rest of the patients, and then we'll have to follow them for a year, so, and then we'll file. Mm -hmm. So, you know, however long the, the FDA takes uh, takes with that is, uh, is a little bit hard to tell, but we're still a couple years away. Great. And will you need any more money to get to the finish line? Not, not for uh, regulatory approvals, mm -hmm. but uh, for... Um, uh, sales and marketing scale up and a uh, uh, manufacturing scale up, which will be a modest uh, amount of capital, that, that would require additional funding. Great. All right. Well, we're happy to have you as part of OIS and uh, look forward to your presentation today. Great. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks, Russ.